I'm a big superhero and anime fan. Honestly, if you didn't know that by now, I'm a bit disappointed. Look at all the clues. I love watching when the latest episodes come out, but a big problem that I'm constantly running into is spoilers. I have multiple group chats where we constantly discuss and debate our favourite theories and predictions, but we rarely watch the shows at the same time. And sometimes one of us mistakenly spoils the latest episode for the rest of the group. So I built a private chat for my friends and I that will hide spoilers whenever one of us hasn't watched a new episode. And I'm going to show you how I did it with Twilio Sync and Twilio Functions. Let's work through the architecture. First, I'm going to set up a Twilio phone number so that whenever anyone sends a message to it, it forwards that message to everyone else in the group chat. Then we'll also set up a sort of mailbox. If somebody sends a message to a person who doesn't want to receive them just yet, we will hold these messages in a mailbox powered by Twilio Sync. Now, whenever the person is ready to see those messages, they can send an instruction, let's say show, and Twilio will go and retrieve all of those messages that have been held for them. All right, it's time to jump into code. Now, I want to make this project lightweight and something that I don't need to worry about maintaining. Twilio Functions is a serverless environment which empowers developers to quickly and easily create event-driven Twilio applications. It's perfect for fun little projects like this. In the terminal, using the Twilio CLI with the serverless plugin, I am going to initialize a new Twilio serverless project. I'm going to call it Spoiler Free Chat. The Twilio serverless plugin sets up our folder structure and gives us some assets, functions, and some other things that we will need. I'm going to switch this up so that it fits my project. I'm going to need one index.html file with a style.css and two functions, one for setup and one for forwarding text messages. When we're ready to start developing locally, we run the command twilio serverless start. And that sets up a local environment with our assets and our functions all available. If we navigate to localhost 3000 slash index.html, we see the starting page that Twilio set us up with. Let's head over to that index.html, delete everything, and write our own web page. Here's the web page that I made. It looks pretty simple. Let me quickly show you the code behind it. So we have some HTML. It brings in my CSS. It has a couple of headers. And then we get to a form. Now this form can have as many participants as you want. I've only set it up for two, but I need to collect a name and telephone number for each of these participants. I have this submit button. Now it doesn't work like a normal form. This is powered by JavaScript. Anytime somebody clicks on submit, it goes through that form and grabs all of those participants, grabs their names and telephone numbers, and then pushes that into an array called participants. I then make a post request to the root or route, as my American friends like to say, slash setup. And then I stringify this participants array that I created earlier. If the response is OK, we will alert success. If the response is not OK, we will alert the status text and figure out what we need to do to debug it. All right, before we go on, we need to understand a little bit about how Twilio Sync works. Twilio Sync was built as a way to synchronize applications with a single source of state in the cloud. This is really useful when you're hosting state for chats. There are many different data structures that we can use to store data in Twilio Sync. We'll be using two of them, Sync Maps and Sync Lists. Sync Maps are unordered JSON objects accessible via a key. Sync Lists, on the other hand, are an ordered collection of individual items, which are also JSON objects. Lists are perfect for holding on to a long set of messages and keeping them in order. That way, when we send them back to the person once they're ready to see spoilers, we get all of those messages in the correct order that they were sent. The first thing we want to do is set up a new sync service. In the Twilio console, head over to sync. And then we can go over to services and create a new service. We'll give it a name, spoiler free chat. Now we need to grab this service SID because it's within our service SID where our maps and our lists will reside. Back in our code editor, 
head over to your .env file. Now I'm not going to show you my credentials, so I'm going to use a .env.sample file to show you. And in here, add your account SID, auth token, and a Twilio phone number, as well as your sync service SID. All right, let's start in our setup.js file. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make this into an async function because we're going to be working with quite a lot of promises. I'm going to bring in the participants from the event. Now the event has all of those parameters which we passed on. And then I'm going to initialize a Twilio client and get our sync service using the sync service SID, which is in our environment variable. So I'm going to create a sync map called participants, and this is going to hold all of the names and phone numbers of the people in the group chat. And I'm going to use promise.all to go and create a promise for each and every one of these participants. I'm going to add a new sync map item with the key of the participant's name, and it's going to hold their name, their telephone number, and it will also have a flag for showing. Uh, this will tell me if the person wants to see new messages or not. And then I'm going to create a list for each of these people to hold the messages that they don't want to see just yet. And finally, I'm going to create a message to send to all of these people from my Twilio number, giving them instructions about the fact that they've been added to this chat and how they can control it with a hide command and a show command. Last but not least, because we're dealing with promises, if the results are all good, we're going to call back with success. If something went wrong, we're going to call back with an error message. So this setup function will only run once and will be used to set up all of the sync maps and sync lists that we will need for our application later on. All right, time to work on our forwarding messages. So we're going to set up another async function and this time we're going to bring in the message body because this function is going to be triggered by a text message into the group chat. Now, just like before, I'm going to bring in the Twilio client and my sync service, and then I'm going to go and grab the list of all of those participants. Now, I want to figure out who the sender is, so I'm going to filter those participants by their telephone number and see whose telephone number matches who the message came from. I'm going to grab that sender and grab their data, and I'll know who are the recipients based on the people who are in the participants array, but are not the sender. Now, just in case the person who is sending this message is not one of the people inside my group chat, I'm going to check if this sender does not exist in our participants list at all. If they don't, we'll just send them a message telling them they're not on the participants list and they can bugger off we need to figure out if the message that is coming in is a command to maybe hide or show messages. So the first thing I'll do is I'll check if the first character of this message body is a slash. And if it is, I will use a switch statement. So if they say that it is a hide, I'm going to run the function hide spoilers. If they say it's a show, I'm going to run the function show spoilers. Those functions don't exist yet, so let's write them out. If they want to hide spoilers, I am going to go over to the sync map and get their item and update it. The same name and telephone number will remain the same, but I will set the show to false because they don't want to see any more messages. And then I'll message them back saying that I'll hide any new messages that may be coming in. For show spoilers, we'll be doing a bit more. So first we'll just copy the code we had before and change it so that we set the show to true. Next we need to go and get all of their held messages. So I'm going to list all the messages that were saved in their sync list. Now I need to send all of these messages out and then for each of those messages I am going to send a message with that message body and who that message was from. I then need to go back into that sync list and delete all of the messages that we have just sent because we don't want them to receive messages that they've already read before. And then I'll just send them a message saying, hey, here are your messages. And finally, last but not least, we need to handle forwarding messages. So once again, I'm going to use promise.all and I'm going to go through all of those recipients. 
if they have the show flag as true, we will just forward the message on to them. However, if the show flag is false, we will create a new sync list item and add it to their sync list. This will be the latest message that has been held for them. It will have the body of the message and who the message came from. Finally, if everything works well, we will call back with success. If something goes wrong, we will call back an error and we will try and debug it. Oof, a lot of code, but you know what time it is? Testing time. To deploy our functions to the cloud, run the command Twilio serverless deploy. Twilio will deploy your functions and your assets to the cloud and give you URLs for all of them. Now we'll need to focus on two URLs, our index.html so that we can set up our participants and the forward message URL. Let's copy this forward message URL and use it to update our phone number. We'll update a phone number so that the SMS URL now points to our forward message function. Head over to your index.html file, add your names and phone numbers for yourselves and your friends and hit submit. You should get messages telling you that you have been added to the group chat. Now you and your friends can message each other like normal. Anytime you don't want to see any more new messages, just send in slash hide and it will tell us it will hide messages. Why don't we check this out now? I have a fake friend powered by a Twilio number. So I'm going to send a spoiler. They all die. <laughs> and if we go back, we can see that the message didn't come through. But if I put the command slash show, it retrieves those messages and now I can see them. Thank God I'd watched the TV show already. Thanks for joining another episode of Over Engineering with Nathaniel. Hopefully you never have to go through another spoiler again. Check out this other video here to see some other cool things that you can build with Twilio and tell me about what you built. Hit me up on social media at ChatterboxCoder and also let me know if you have any questions. And like I always say, I can't wait to see what you build. I'll see you 